The HP Billiton is the world's largest diversified natural resources group with a market cap of 196 billion US dollars. It's focused on iron ore and copper, but oil and gas production make up nearly a third of its revenue and profits. It trades in a price to earnings ratio of 16.2, dividend yield of 3%, recently hitting all time highs on BHP Billiton. Yes, all time highs in rands, not all time highs in dollars, and by dollars I mean Australian dollars, US dollars, and British pounds. Because remember, Billiton. You know, a combination of BHP and Billiton, but BHP was originally the Australian company, of course. Billiton was more oil and South Africa and so on. So you put it all together and the assets they've got, it trades on all these different markets. But, you know, people often think of it in terms of its coal and its iron ore and its kind of stuff down here, but its real important assets, Gulf of Mexico. Gulf of Mexico oil assets. Remember, they've got those big fields like Mad Dog, Neptune, Shenzi, and all those that they share with BP. In that area which blew up, you know, two I years ago. I was going to say, I'm not sure you should be throwing around <laughs> Gulf of Mexico as the key place for BHP billets. Well, you know, is every now and over? then people have a problem, but you know, that is very, very profitable high margin oil because it's in the right market. They put it on a pipeline on the bottom of the ocean. It goes on to the coast at Galveston in Texas and then into the oil refineries in the southern coast of America. They also have gas and onshore reserves because remember they bought the Eagle Ford shale field in Texas from Chesapeake. And well, I they've remember, also been but I'll <laughs> take your word for it. <laughs> they've also bought that thing called Petrohawk, which has got other assets. So oil and gas, very significant for them. They also traditionally have some oil and gas production fields in, in Australia. So in the Bass Strait, the Northwest Shelf, because of course that's where they originally came from. That oil goes into Australian refineries and into Singapore and so on. So oil, very important to Billiton. And yes, if you've you got a positive view about this, you might well think. Billiton, you but could you do don't worse. have a positive view. You say it's going to be flat. So where do we go then? If you if you if you factor in if oil is so important in Billiton's life, yeah. and you factor in a flat oil price from here, mm. what's there to get excited about? Well, remember, it's not so much that the market is flat; it's that it's shifting. So in the old days, the Saudis would be making all the money and using it to buy Bugattis and gold tent poles and fresh Falcons. Now, in fact. It's the Americans that are making the money, and Billiton is right there in that because they went in and paid what looked like top dollar for Petrohawk and for those Eagle Ford assets, but now they are the ones that are producing. You know that the production of a BHP Billiton is about 250,000 barrels a day oil equivalent, which makes their oil operations three times the size of Sassol's oil operations. Actually, more like two times if you add in. <laughs> I'm the glad you rectified that because that's quite a big. Uh, <laughs> so it's a big number. I mean, yes, the oil use the oil use in the world is about 80 million barrels a day, but they're producing about 250,000. All right. So you're saying you need a BHP Billiton in your portfolio? You know, I think so. I think it is true to say that you know China has caused some people a bit of indigestion in recent years. It used to grow. Or provided at 10%. a buying opportunity. It used to grow at ten percent per annum. Now it's growing at seven and a half. You know, and it's looking like it's calming down. But if it does get a new lease of life from this economic meeting that I'm talking about, that would be a positive. And I must point out that did you know that in China the ratio of motor cars to humans is about the same as it is in Swaziland. So what I'm trying to get across to you is that China is becoming rapidly urbanized, its population is increasing its wealth substantially, and yet its vehicle penetration, the number of people with cars, is still extremely low. So the scope for more cars, consuming more transport fuels, is very, very large. Mm, I Even see though you pointed out the Mercedes uh, sales figures to me and telling me that the consumer <laughs> is not depressed, as we've discussed extensively yeah, I'd look, on the I'd show. Certainly not all the Chinese are going to buy Mercedes. They're much more likely to buy Cherry QQs and uh, GMCs and things. But I just think that all things being equal, oil consumption will remain firm and as some of the other tired reserves run out, that companies like Billiton, and then again, you can also buy Billiton simply for the iron ore and the copper assets. All right, so this is a very positive story in your book, Hot or Not on BHP Billiton? Definitely hot, and at the current level, it's really rewarding long-term shareholders that have waited since 2008 for it to hit this 325 plus mark.